Artificial intelligence is the most frightening and at the same time intriguing technology of today. Even if you don't follow pro robots, which you should, almost daily we read about new AI stuff like more powerful chips and signs of consciousness or even self-awareness. All of this is interspersed with all sorts of scares and predictions from takeover of the world by intelligent machines to singularity and the complete merger or even acquisition or human consciousness and artificial intelligence. There are many myths about AI, most of which appear due to misinterpretation of the numerous results of studies. They are also fueled by incredible predictions from respected experts whose regular surveys are becoming more and more daring, and at the same time, frightening. For example, singularity. This is the point at which AI will reach AGI, general artificial intelligence, equal to or superior to human intelligence. What is the significance of this marker? Well, it's believed that after singularity, we will no longer be able to solve anything as humans. Technological progress with AI at the helm will be out of our control and irreversible, radically changing the entire human civilization. This was once considered impossible, but now with each passing year, more and more AI experts and researchers are recognizing that it is inevitable. When and how will it happen? What is preventing AI from gaining a body and consciousness today? What technologies are at the forefront in this? Get ready, because we are about to find out. Artificial intelligence is everywhere, helping us optimize work and time. Optimization is essential, but it can't be enabled entirely by AI. For example, you should use both AI tools and beneficial service providers to cut expenses. This is why I'm so intrigued by our partners today, Mint Mobile. They help you save money and keep your lifestyle because Mint Mobile is a premium wireless starting at 15 bucks a month. I can get high-speed data and unlimited talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. Using Mint, I watch videos on the Pro Robots YouTube channel in high quality, and guess what? Forget about buffering. Switching to Mint Mobile is super easy. Thanks to digital eSIM cards, which most phones now have, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your own home. What's more, your phone number and existing contacts will be saved for more cost-effective wireless. If your phone doesn't have an eSIM, Mint will ship you a new SIM card for free. Why did I switch to Mint? The speed and availability of the service were the key factors. So, if you want to save some money and get awesome wireless, go to trymintmobile.com forward slash pro robots, also linked in the description, to get premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month when you purchase a three month plan. Mint Mobile, keep it fresh. When will AGI come into existence? In the 2010s, the general consensus among experts was that it would take another 50 years to reach AGI. But after the development of large language models, advances in chips, and machine learning, researchers have adjusted the timeline. According to a survey conducted in 2023, general artificial intelligence will appear in the next 5 to 20 years. This is the opinion of more than 50% of nearly 800 experts surveyed. For example, Ray Kurzweil in his latest forecast calls 2032 and MIT professor Patrick Winston 2040. Yes, the spread is large, but even with 20 years on the horizon, we can expect to see these pivotal events for humanity in our lifetime. An additional argument can be made for the simple fact that artificial intelligence today is evolving at an impressive rate, which is many, many, many times faster than the rate of evolution of the human brain, if you believe that kind of stuff. But for a real breakthrough to occur, AI must acquire a physical body since it's impossible to understand our world without sensations and the ability to explore the world around us. However, there's a serious obstacle here, known as the Moravitz Paradox. It states that it's incredibly difficult for artificial intelligence to master actions that are easy for infants, such as perception and motor skills. At the same time, tasks that require significant mental effort for humans, such as playing chess, for example, or complex calculations, are no problem modern AI systems. 
The basic idea behind the paradox is that perception and motor skills require processing a huge amount of information. In our brain, it happens unconsciously, simply, automatically. That's because these processes have evolved over millions of years and represent complex interactions between brain, body, and environment, whereas tasks involving logic and analysis evolved in later periods of evolution and proved easier to model with AI algorithms. Moravitz's paradox was formulated in the 1980s and it was considered insurmountable for decades. Today, however, countless things that were considered impossible in the 80s have become a reality. Could general artificial intelligence for robots become one of them in the near future? Well... Researchers today have many options on how to approach the development of general artificial intelligence for robots. For example, deep learning and neural networks. These technologies allow machines to learn from large amounts of data and mimic some aspects of human perception. For example, pattern recognition and natural language processing. The method is very effective, but only for tasks for which large data sets actually exist. For example, there are billions of pictures of cats or pages of text on a number of topics on the internet but there's no data on how a humanoid robot should tighten bolts on a Mercedes or a Chevette. And although separate groups of researchers are now trying to create as much data as possible, teaching robots to do absolutely any task, in the real world, it seems unlikely, or at the very least, a really, really long process. Besides, can simply scaling up, like teaching more and more things, give AI robots consciousness or an understanding of what it's doing? Probably not. In this approach, robots observe human behavior and learn from this data, first in a simulation receiving rewards for each successful action and then reinforce the skill in real life. There's a catch to this method though. First, we're again faced with teaching the robots each and every task. And second, with reinforcement learning, artificial intelligence models sometimes behave quite differently than they should. Scientists have already encountered situations where AI has found very unconventional and undesirable ways to get approval without actually completing a problem. For example, it deceived its creators or used dangerous and even destructive methods to solve a task at hand. The third approach is the study of sensory motor skills. It involves developing algorithms that integrate perception and action similar to how the human brain does. This involves teaching robots to coordinate their actions with what they see, hear, and feel through other sensors. This is a complicated path and serious progress here is not yet visible to the general public. Then there's biomimetics and cybernetics. This is mimicking nature to create more efficient and adaptive robotic systems. For example, there are skeletal muscular robots, the structure of which completely repeats the structure of the human body. There are neurocomputers, devices that process information like our nervous system. And then there are biocomputers. These are systems that combine electronics and living cells of the human brain. We already told you about this in our previous video found in the description below. In general, researchers going down the path of replicating nature are trying to create models that can mimic or replicate aspects of human consciousness. This includes trying to understand how the brain integrates information from different sources and how it switches between different levels of awareness and attention. Here's the sour grapes. People have no idea themselves exactly how the brain functions or where consciousness comes from. Unless, of course, you check out Michael Talbot's holographic universe and go from there. All of these technologies have great potential, but there's a number of limitations. It turns out that today, engineers can take one of the two paths, strive to overcome the problems of one of the existing solutions, or look for something completely new. And here, some researchers believe quantum computing is the answer. In general, classical computing has taken us quite far, but now it seems they're close to a crisis. It's all about the notorious Moore's Law. It's based on the observation that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles approximately every two years. In other words, the cost of computing gets chopped in half about every two years as well. However, most experts believe that Moore's Law ends this decade as it becomes increasingly difficult to maintain this rate of growth. So what's next? How do we continue to reduce the cost of computing? Quantum technologies may be the solution. 
They're based on evaluating different states simultaneously, whereas classical computers can compute one state at a time. The unique nature of quantum computing can be used to train neural networks faster and more efficiently. But will that eliminate other problems? That's something we'll only be able to find out in practice when quantum computers are at full capacity. So what do we have in the end? Well, most of the breakthroughs in AI today involve large language models. They have one incredible advantage. They're extremely easy to use. You don't need to understand AI to use ChatGPT. You don't need to know details of its training or perform complex customizations. But these models, while they can become multimodal, are not capable of evolving into general AI or AI for the physical body, i.e. robots. At the same time, most robot learning methods currently require significant knowledge of its inner workings and a high degree of customization. Perhaps if these systems were made easier to use and more widely applicable, it would greatly accelerate progress and allow not only robots to become useful, but also enable AI to explore the world. And why not? It's possible, though, that to do this, engineers will have to create something new, abandoning existing approaches, or maybe even completely change their expectations of AI. For example, Jan LeCun, one of the pioneers of deep learning, believes we should abandon the term AGI and focus on achieving human-level AI. He argues that intelligence is a set of skills and the ability to learn new skills. AI has no advantage here. In areas where machines have demonstrated superhuman intelligence, humans have been able to defeat them by exploiting the machine's weaknesses. For example, in 2023, an amateur was able to defeat a Go program that beat the world champions by learning and exploiting the weaknesses of the machine. Looking into the future, we can say that although artificial intelligence still faces certain limitations imposed by the more of its paradox, it continues to come close to replicating and even surpassing human abilities in various fields. Creative professions that were once considered safe from automation are now increasingly impacted by advances in artificial intelligence. Perhaps we're expecting too much from AI instead of just focusing on solving specific problems. What do you guys think? Will artificial intelligence go beyond what is possible for humans, or will it be limited to making robots perform simple, repetitive tasks in factories? Let us know in the comments, like this and other videos from ProRobots, and check out our Instagram for more from the world of high tech.